Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kirsten Ross. And this video is a follow-up to one I did a couple weeks ago, which how do you choose the right influencer for your brand? And there was a comment on that video, which I actually get that question quite frequently from Peter Botherway from New Zealand. He asks, well, what you're saying is quite right, but how do you get an influencer to promote your product to launch a crowdfunding campaign when all you have to demonstrate what your product is and does is 3D printed prototype. So that's what we're covering today in this video. Not just that, but what do you do if you have limited prototypes or it costs $3,000 to create a prototype and you don't have a bunch of samples to send to the press? So what do you do if you are pre-launch but you still wanna tap into influencers? So that is exactly what this video is about today. And guys, if you're new to my channel, if you like this topic and you are in the business of launching products, be sure to hit subscribe, like this video, and put a comment below with a question that you have that you wanna see featured in a future video, but do be sure to subscribe to this channel because we do release regular weekly content. So on to the question of crowdfunding campaigns and even product launches for products. Typically when you're well, when you're doing a pre-sale campaign, you usually only have a 3D printed prototype or you may only have renders. So how do you enroll influencers to help spread the word when that's all you have? So influencers, I see are a long-term brand play strategy. So the first thing I look at is not looking at working with them for one post, but more when you work with influencers, especially in the pre-launch, you can get them to do a shout out about your product. You can get them to do a product review if you do have product, which you don't because I assume you're watching this video. And you can get them to really help spread the word of what you're looking to do with their audience. Now the thing with influencers is influencers are always looking for great content that their audience loves. And because influencers are always looking for content and a great story and a great brand to get behind, that's where you come in. So the value you bring to an influencer should not be hindered by you not having a physical product. Now, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be more difficult to get influencers on board if you don't have something physical to send them before launch for your product review, but it just means you have to get more creative. So one example is I worked with Taplock in Toronto and right before launch, it's a fingerprint padlock that would, it was a design firm that had literally one prototype. So what we did is we worked with a, pre, a PR agency to invite journalists for a press day. And so we actually had four to five interviews where we brought journalists to our office and we got them to look at the product and give it a review and also interview the founder. So that's one thing you could do. If you live in a major city, you can arrange your own press day where you invite journalists to your office to review your product because that way you're only tapping into one product, one prototype, and it's not reliant on you shipping it halfway across the planet. So that's one way to do it. But the other question is, what if you don't even have that? What if you only have renders? So another way to do it is I recommend that you reach out to influencers that share the same audience as you. And if you have a worthy cause, so for example, if you are launching a product that helps women with breastfeeding, like it's a breast milk chiller, for example, if you are pre-launch, then what you can do is you can reach out to mom influencers and see what they think about your product and see if they'd be willing to give you an Instagram shout out, share one of your posts on their story, or doing something else where you, they are still sharing your product on social media. And how you can, what that funnel looks like is when they do share your story or post about you or give you a shout out or something like that, or perhaps even do a giveaway contest. Um, with your product ahead of time, what you're doing is you can funnel that traffic to your landing page to build your audience. Okay, so wait, what does that look like? Well, before launch, if you do have an influencer that says like, hey guys, check out this really cool product I came across, it's helping moms with breastfeeding, um, link, like just, you know, check out my latest Instagram post. And in the description, they're going to link to your website that you're sending traffic anyway. So that's a really good lead gen strategy prior to launch where influencers are willing to give you shout outs and stuff like that. And then what you can do is 
offer to send them free product once you're actually shipping. So that's one way to do it. The other reason I love working with influencers before launch, even if you have to get creative, if you only have renderings or a 3D printed prototype, is because working with influencers before launch is an awesome way to test their audience. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you look at the best way to find influencers for your brand, there's only one way to do it, and that's test their audience. So you don't know for sure if an influencer's audience is going to convert or really resonate well with your product. So what better way to test if their audience is a fit and if they like your product other than testing it? So getting them to do a shout out ahead of launch is a great way to test engagement around your post to see if this is something you may want to revisit with the influencer when you actually launch and offer them an affiliate commission to be a long-term partner of your brand because if it works and their audience loves it and you have a great product that solves a need that they need help with like that's just it's a win-win so I really wouldn't look at influencer marketing you being like hampered by influencer marketing because you don't have a thousand like review units to send out you can get super creative if you only have a handful or you're selective with who you send it out to or if you don't even have that look at what is the best way to get the influence, like look at relevance. You know, I, I talk about this in the last video on the best way to find an influencer for your brand. Like you want to make sure that you're reaching out to the right influencer with an audience and a proposition that you know is going to benefit their audience. And what I mean by that is focus on the problem that you help solve through their, in their audience through your product. And when you do that, that's a really great way to start an influencer relationship. Even if you reach out to influencers when you're looking for a shout out or something like early, early stage, you're still going to be making connections with these influencers. So even if some of them say, not right now, come up back to us in the future, like in six, eight, 12 months, you can go back to that influencer and say, hey, we connected. I've launched. I'd love to send you a product. And then that can be lead gen for future like future opportunities right there. So I, I know that I just want to say like, while well, influencer marketing is definitely more difficult and you will have to reach out to more people without a pro like without a, a few prototypes to send out, but there are still ways that people will work with you. Okay. So apart from that, let me know what you think of this video. Or if there's something that you're even doing, um, below in the comments and be sure to subscribe. But the one last thing I will say is it sometimes helps to get a visual. So we with um, like what level of renderings work, you know, like what if you only have really ugly. I lost my train of thought because someone is drilling in our building in the middle of the day, which is fun. But um, either guys, shout out. This is the last video that I'm recording in this condo. We're moving out of the city this week. So I'm really pumped. You're gonna see new office space. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to the barn doors, which are a fan favorite, but I'm looking to, I'm super pumped to see like what other design elements we have and designing my office. So super pumped about that. But apart from that, before I just going off on that little tangent, um, what kind of assets look good? Like. So if you're pitching your product to influencers, again, it's not the value add of where can I send this? You have to think more about what is the benefit someone has by using your product and define it in, term, in, in terms of that and then identify an influencer that shares that same audience, okay? But in terms of the kind of renders or what you should have ready before you send to influencers, you do wanna put your best foot forward. So if you have a landing page that has picture perfect renderings or you've done some CGI where you've taken a render and superimposed it beautifully onto a stock image. Um, there are guys on Fiverr that do that for a living. So there's a lot of stuff you could do to get creative to make your product look super presentable so that even if you don't have a product to send to influencers, they're still going to like it and feel that they are wanting to share something early stage and exciting with their audience. So guys, uh, thanks for watching. If you do have a future, another question, drop it below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. We put out content weekly. If you are interested in checking out the video on how to find the right influencer for you, be sure to go here. And apart from that, we will see you next time.
Take care. Thanks so much. Bye.